Hi, uh, this is Forrest Isbell from Cedar Creek. I want to thank um, Eric and Sarah for letting me have this chance to share a bit of the work uh, from Cedar Creek. I'm just going to focus on one storyline uh, that's been investigated at Cedar Creek over the last few decades, uh, given that this is a lightning talk. Um, and this comes back to the idea that diversity might provide some stability of productivity in the face of natural climate variability or uh, extreme climate events. And so these ideas go back to uh, early work. There was a major drought in Minnesota in the upper Midwest part of the US in the late 1980s. And there was a paper published um, in 1994 by Dave Tillman and John Downing that showed diverse plant communities at Cedar Creek were more resistant uh, and more resilient in the sense that they lost less productivity during this drought and they had more fully recovered productivity shortly after this drought. Um, but questions were raised about these results right away because these were uh, experimental plots that had been fertilized. And so the low diversity plant communities were fertilized plant communities uh, and the high diversity communities were unfertilized. And so uh, this raised questions about whether these were diversity effects that were on increasing stability or whether these were fertilization effects on uh, decreasing these dimensions of stability. And Dave Tillman anticipated that uh, criticism of the, the, the observational data here, and so he established this big biodiversity experiment in 1994, the, the same year that that paper was published. And so there are plots here planted with different numbers of grassland plant species, uh, randomized and replicated to control for um, soil fertility and other abiotic factors. And after the first decade of the experiment, um, Dave published this result showing that increasing plant diversity causes an increase in ecosystem stability. And now this measure of ecosystem stability is the proportional change in productivity from one year to the next. And so this includes both um, resistance and resilience. It includes um, how much the system moves during a wet or dry event and then how quickly it recovers after that. Um, unfortunately, we haven't had a major drought at Cedar Creek since this experiment was established in 1994, which uh, makes it hard to test that original uh, question. And so we combined data from the Cedar Creek biodiversity experiment with many other grassland plant diversity experiments. And we found uh, that many of the other sites showed this same positive effect of plant diversity on ecosystem stability and that that was often due to increased resistance uh, during these climate events, whether they were wet or dry, um, short or, or prolonged events. But we didn't find a consistent effect of diversity on ecosystem resilience or the, the recovery rate following these climate events. And that was because communities recovered productivity very quickly, regardless of whether they had very few species or uh, many species in them. To continue to follow up on this work, um, our, our newest efforts include crossing these treatments experimentally. So if we can't get uh, Mother Nature to provide a drought at Cedar Creek, we're going to create one um, with rainout shelters. And so in this biodiversity experiment, we've had the diversity manipulations now going on for 25 years. Um, the warming treatment has been applied since 2009, uh, so a little more than a decade now. And since 2017, we've also had these rainout shelters reducing precipitation um, to what we would see for a one in 100 year drought. And I'll just um, show briefly some preliminary results that we're starting to, to find with these um, new treatments. And so unsurprisingly, the, the rainout shelters are decreasing productivity, but this um, Perhaps surprisingly, this is greatest in the high diversity plots and smallest in the low diversity plots, which is a bit different than uh, what we had seen previously with other observational climate events or biodiversity gradients. And warming at our site is increasing productivity by quite a lot, actually, this, this decade of warming. Uh, and again, these effects are much larger at high diversity than at low diversity. And so we have a lot more work to do to follow up on on these earlier results, but the, um, the current results appear that biodiversity loss may, uh, may reduce the effects of climate change on ecosystem productivity. And I'll stop with that.
Great. Thank you, Boris.